welcome to the Simcoe County Archives. My name is Jen Huddleston and I am the Private Collections Archivist. And I'm Olivia White, I'm the Digital Preservation Archivist. Here at the Simcoe County Archives, uh, our goal is to collect, preserve, and make available the documentary heritage of the County of Simcoe. And to do this, we have two major collection areas. So the first is our corporate and municipal records program, in which we collect records from the lower tier towns and townships, the city of Barrie, as well as corporate records from the county of Simcoe. And we also have our private collections program, in which we collect records from citizens, businesses, and local organizations relevant to the county of Simcoe. So today we're going to be focusing on our private collections program. We're going to go over our collections mandate, talk about some of the different media that we like to take in, and we're going to show you some examples of our favorite collections. To date, the Simcoe County Archives have over 450 private collections. We've been actively taking in records from community members since the 1960s. We have records that date all the way back to the 1500s, although the majority of our records were created in the 19th, 20th, and 21st centuries. We also take records in in all kinds of different formats, from paper-based records, photography, film, um, to more modern formats like JPEGs, PDFs, digital records of all kinds. It's a common misconception that only very old records have a place at an archives, but truly we are as interested in your PDFs as we are in your paper. So while we do take records in all kinds of different formats, we do still have a collection criteria that we try to stick to. And the main point in this criteria is that the records we take in, the information we take in, has to relate back to the history and the people of the county of Simcoe. So that does, that does mean that we have to be sort of selective in what we take. A lot of the times um, we do get people who come in and you know they're really passionate about something that they have that their grandma kept and what it was is like a, you know newspaper clippings from the Toronto Star about the moon landing. And that's a really like big moment in history. It's, it's significant, but because it it is so significant and everybody recognized that, it's already very well documented in other archives. And also if it's coming from something like a not local newspaper, you're lacking that local perspective, which is really what's the most important thing to us. So instead of something like that, what would be of interest to us would be if say your great aunt or your grandma kept a diary. She's living in Innisfil or Angus or Coldwater, somewhere in the county, and she wrote about watching the moon landing on TV. That's a really special and unique local perspective on a world event, and that's kind of more what we're interested in capturing here as part of our local public record. So as I said, we've uh, pulled a couple different uh, collections as examples of things that we do take in here at the at the Simcoe County Archives and that we have available for researchers to come in and see. This is an example of uh, an, organiz an organization that's been bringing us records for many years. Uh, it's the Oro uh, Medante Horticultural Society. And the records and things that they would bring us include things like meeting minutes, annual reports. We have a scrapbook here about a project that they did. Um, in the early 2000s. We have a scrapbook here that they did that dates back to the 1970s. And it's a really great opportunity for both us as, uh, as an archives and for local organizations. They're able to bring their records here so they don't have to you know, worry about things like storage anymore um, and you know, planning for contingencies. Um, but the records are always available. They can make an appointment and they can come in and, uh, and review review their own records. Um, and it's great for the community as well because if people who uh, might be interested in the history of this organization, they can come in and they can look at these records as well. In addition to records that we take in from local groups and organizations, we also very often get family records. And uh, we've pulled here a great example that we took in pretty recently. This is the Childer House family collection. And what it is, is it's a series of letters um, that four brothers were writing to yet another brother um, who was living in Aurelia. Those brothers were all stationed overseas, mostly in France during the First World War. So we were lucky enough to get all of that correspondence uh, from the different brothers, uh, as well as um, some other really interesting things, like we had this really beautiful um, 
package that's used that was used to store the, the letters. We're not sure who made it. It could have been uh, maybe their their mother, maybe a wife. We're not sure, but it's it's a great part of the collection. Um, and we also got things like there's a newspaper clipping that features the brothers. Um, they sent a lot of fun postcards. And taken all together, it's just a really great record of this family going through uh, a really big moment in, in history. So we're very lucky to have it. And we do get in a lot of family hist uh, people who are interested in family history. And something like this would obviously speak to that. It also has a lot of information about you know, Canadian involvement in the First World War, social history. It's just a great collection. So this is another example we've pulled. This is a record that came from uh, more of an individual. And it's a very unique record in our collection. So. What it is, is, and I'll delicately open it here so we can take a look, just a little look, is it's actually a piece of correspondence that was written on a rice paper scroll. This is from the 1920s. It's very, very delicate, so I won't be opening it more than this. And it was written from a Presbyterian uh, missionary named Christina Francis McDougall. And what she was doing was while she was stationed in China in the 1920s, she was writing letters to students back at Berry Collegiate Institute where her sister was a teacher. So this rice paper scroll is actually eight meters long in total and it includes 10 different uh, letters to various students uh, at BCI. Uh, and unfortunately, we don't have the letters that were being written back to her. Not sure where, uh, where those are, but if they're out in the community, we'd love to see them. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a very fascinating, uh, a fascinating collection in and of itself. And it came in with this class photo, presumably uh, of some of the students who, who were corresponding with Christina McDougall. So that's a great one. And it's also really interesting because we we did a blog post about this particular record just because it is so unique. And family members of Christina Francis McDougall actually reached out to us and we were able to get more of the story from them. So also a good example of how kind of community outreach can really fill in those, those gaps in the historical narrative. So it was very exciting for us. Uh, and we have another great example of uh, family records that were donated to us. This is from the Godfrida Bird collection. And what we caught in this collection were a series of scrapbooks, photo albums, and diaries from three sisters who lived in Barrie and Shanty Bay. And one of, the, one of my favorite parts of the record was um, there was a photo album de dedicated to the building of a family cottage um, that they called the No Canaries Cottage, and it was around LaFontaine, and they built it in the late 1930s. And in addition to having this great photographic record of them building the cottage, and then it's there are many different albums, so they span all the way into the 60s, so you're seeing a lot of like that family spending time there. They also had a log book um, where visitors to the cottage would write little notes. So it's a really interesting record of um, all kinds of members of the community who would have been, who were friends of the, uh, of the birds and the Crossleys and they would have been visiting their cottage. So just great, like just a great little, little snapshot into how people were spending their leisure time in the 20th century. Uh, a great, a great record for us. So here we have some records from the J.E. Coop collection. Now, John E. Coop lived near Hawkstone in Oro Township, and he donated seven reels of 16 millimeter and eight millimeter films from the 1960s to the 1970s. And what's really interesting about this collection is it features a lot of different footage of Simcoe County from different times of the year, and it also features heavily wildlife and nature. So it's a really interesting look into what Mr. Coop found interesting to document during his daily life. 
Now, naturally, film requires a projector in order to view the footage, but over time, that type of playing can cause excessive wear and tear on the original reels. So what we have done is we reformatted them to VHS tapes, which were heavily used around that time, but now we've also digitized the film reels to provide greater access. So reformatting and digitizing are two great strategies to provide greater access to researchers while also attending to the conservation needs of the original records. So here we have some records from Ovenden College, which was a day in boarding school for girls in operation from 1915 to 1950. And it was founded by three educators, Ethel Elgood, Elizabeth Ingram, and Raina Shoffoff. Now, this is an interesting example of a thematic collection because instead of having one overarching Ovenden College collection, we've gathered materials from several different collections and several different sources because like an institution, like a school, School. It had a great impact in many people's lives, such as the students and the teachers. So for that reason, we have pictures of the school. We also have many issues of the Ovenden Chronicle, which was an annual newsletter that they would publish that documented different activities that the students would complete. We also have short stories from one of the educators herself, Raina Shopoff, who wrote different school plays for the students. And we also have an entrance booklet that talks about the different prices to attend the school. So in 1915, it would have been about $414 to attend the school, which in today's currency would be about $10,000. So by pulling together different records from different sources, we can get a better understanding of the type of education that the students received and the type of activities that would be happening in their daily lives. And and you can learn more about Ovenden College by visiting the Simcoe County Archives blog, in which we also have many other stories featured in our private collections. We hope you've enjoyed learning a bit about the private collections that we have here at the Simcoe County Archives. And for those interested in either coming in to take a look at our records for their own research, you can book an appointment on our website. Um, and if you're interested in donating records to the archives, again, you can book an assessment interview on our website or email us at archives.simco.ca.